In this video, I'm going to give a brief demonstration of the compiler and how we built it. It basically takes in C Sharp as a source language and emits the target language LLVM IR. It is an assembly like language that supports further compilation to native code. This is an overview of the phases of compilation that the compiler passes through, from scanning to code generation. This is the interface of our visualizer that we have used in the development of this C-sharp compiler. We will first start by loading in the source code file. Once we load in the file, we can see on the left here in the File Explorer view, the files that have been loaded. Amongst these include files from the core library that provide support for the built-in types. Since in this sample C-sharp source code, a using declarative has been declared at the top here. The corresponding system library, which handles I.O. and underlying input type conversions, have also been loaded. The source code of any of these can be viewed in the center. When selecting to compile the program, the user can simply select to build all, then generate the target code, or there are optional phases for the user to select from. The first one is to perform the lexical and syntax checks. Once we select this option, at this point we can see if there are any lexical or syntax errors in our source code. If there are none, we can then proceed to the next phase. The next optional phase is to view the AST nodes generated. When we select this option from the menu, the abstract syntax tree will be shown here on the right for all the source files, including our core library. Then detailed information can be shown about a particular AST node by selecting and clicking on it. For example, we can view the AST node information for the method Fibonacci from the inputted source code here shown in the box below. At this phase, we can see the information from the parsing phase contained in the AST node, which is the name of the method, its member modifiers, and return type. To get the other information, we need to build the object hierarchy. Once the object hierarchy has been built, the AST method node will now contain further information, such as the full qualified return type, which takes into account namespaces and inheritance. Next, we're going to take a look at the object browser. It consists of a representation for the class hierarchy, class struct, enum, and method table, along with the object layout for fields. The class table contains all the classes, both from the core library and the user-constructed classes. They are represented here with the namespace followed by the class name. The struct and enum table are somewhat similar to the class table as well. In the class hierarchy here, we can view the parent-child class inheritance relationships amongst the classes by expanding the levels. All classes initially derive from system.object. To the right here is the method table. The method table stores all the methods belonging to a particular class. It also contains constructors, accessors, type conversion, functions, and operator overloads. Below it is the object layout. Here we can see all the fields contained in a particular class. The this keyword in the brackets tells us that this field is from this current class. However, if the field is inherited from a parent class, it will instead have the base keyword in the brackets. The next phase is when the type checks are performed. At this point, the source code is analyzed to ensure that the types are used according to the language specifications of c -sharp. If no errors are found, then we can generate the target code and view it here. This is the .ll file that contains the LLVM code. At the top of the file is the integer and string table generated for optimization purposes. After it is the object layout, followed by the entry point of the program and other constructs such as methods and constructors. There are different options for saving the generated code. The first one saves the LLVM IR as a .ll assembly file. The next option saves the generated code as bit code that can be run on any platform provided the LLVM tools are installed. 
and the last option links the core library with the saved bit code. Also provided are command line options for compiling, linking, and executing the source program. We can view the options provided by typing lsc-h. Different output formats for the source code, such as native binary, are available that will generate OS and architecture specific code. Next, we're going to compile the sample program and run it. We're going to output it as a .ll file in bitcode with the core library linked and as native binary. These are the files generated from the previous command. Next, we'll run the bitcode file that was linked with the core library. This is the output for the sequence of Fibonacci numbers from our source program. And next, we'll run the native code.exe file. To show that the compiler we've created makes c -sharp platform independent, we are going to run this program on Linux, x Ubuntu version 10.4. This source code showed us a good case where no errors were encountered from the first stages of lexical analysis up to code generation. But now we're going to show a few sample program cases that give us a closer look at the semantic analysis process and the methodology for detecting the different kind of semantic errors. In this code sample, once the code has been compiled, we can see the error messages in the box below. If we double click on an error message, the source code causing the error will be highlighted. This first error deals with a duplicate declaration of a local variable in a nested scope. The way we track scopes is with the use of a symbol table. The data structure for this symbol table is implemented as a linked list, where each node represents a scope and holds the local variables and their data types within that scope. When a new scope is entered, a new scope node is created that will contain a reference to its outer scope. As in this example, since a local variable with the same name and data type has already been declared in the outer scope, an error is reported. The next error is detected in a similar manner, except this case shows when a duplicate local variable is declared within the same scope. The next case we're going to look at shows us errors detected in mathematical expressions and assignment statements. As we can see from the first error message, an implicit type conversion function is needed for this statement to be allowed. This semantic check is performed by comparing the types of both operands. If their types don't match, a lookup function is used to determine if the type conversion method or operator overload is stored in that types method table. If none is found, it means that an implementation for that has not yet been created, so an error message is generated accordingly. As the semantic analysis phase is one of the most complex phases of compilation, we have shown just a few cases of the various semantic errors that our compiler detects. This video gives a brief background insight into the development process of this project. It has been made available online to the open source community as well for download learning or further development.